Good evening. Susanna, thank you. What a sweet introduction. I really appreciate it. You can stay apart for another year. <laughs> Justin, wow. You know, these students up here have amazing teaching and speaking. Erwin, you and I are in deep trouble. Man, these guys, they could have our job. Roy Patterson, always good to see you. You're one of the most gifted men I know at what you do. Uh, Roy, as you know, works with Moody Radio. One of the things he does, you might not know, is help organize a prayer gathering here in the city with other churches from the north and south and west side of our city with uh, Dr. John Futer. And he also emcees that, keeps that on time. And the most amazing thing is you get pastors to stick to their preaching time. That's nearly impossible, Roy. Way to go. I'm a big fan. Danita, thank you for inviting me to come and be a part. I don't know if you remember the first time you and I had any extended time. A park had just bought a building in the near north neighborhood, and we wanted to move in there and be established. We were have church, we'll travel for nearly 20 years. And we bought this building in Cabrini Green, and I asked Danita, would she mind taking me around? I wanted to meet some families from the neighborhood. I wanted to ask the question, how could we serve them? What are the needs in the neighborhood? And Danita was very kind to take me around when the high-rises were still there, the red and the whites. We were walking from the parking lot into one of the high-rises, about to go up the elevator, and I said to Danita, I said, uh, do you ever get nervous, you know? Is this scary or intimidating to you? And I was new to the city, and I was a little intimidated. Okay, majorly intimidated. And I asked her how she was doing. She said, I'll never forget, she goes, you know what? Um, I'm good, I'm known here, I'm considered a mom, I feel safe. And then she looked at me and she said, but you, on the other hand, you look like an undercover cop. <laughs> Do you remember that? Donita, you have continued to go places and do things that would intimidate most of us, and we are grateful for that. Thank you, thanks for what you do. At Park Community Church, we're very grateful for the vision that God has fostered in Danita and continues to do so. And we're very grateful for Moody Church when they heard a good idea that they got behind it and allowed this to foster. We are engaged with By the Hand Club. We have about 75 volunteers that work in some way, shape, or form on a regular basis with By the Hand Club. I was talking with Susanna earlier, and she was telling me that over the last many years since By the Hand Club, that Park has probably had 2,000 people committed to the work at By the Hand Club, either volunteering during the week or serving and doing various things in terms of helping get buildings ready or whatever it might be and serving on boards. It's a very important ministry to us. I was reminded just a couple of weeks ago, I hadn't been to By the Hand Club in, in a while, and I went by to take a tour, and Elik and Ronell were two students who chaperoned me around and explained to me again what the ministry was and we walked into the gym and I paused for a moment and looked at one of the walls I remember being there with a paint crew when that building was first handed over to you guys and going in there and helping paint that room so we feel like we're very engaged but we also know that we're one of many many churches in the city and around the city that are engaged with by the hand we recognize how important it is and we love what you guys are doing now let me just see for a few minutes tonight if I can help us understand why, why are we here and why should we care about let education ring? Why are we here and why should we care about letting education ring? Now let me see if I can give you four reasons very quickly. First one, because it is good for our city. It is good for our city. Most of us are here tonight because we are committed to the city and we're committed to seeing the needs of our city addressed. If you're at Park, you know I regularly talk about that many people come to Chicago and they move in and they treat it like a tourist. They enjoy all the benefits of the city, great restaurants, theater, music, the lakefront, the Cubs. Can we just pause for a moment and have hope? The Cubs, yes, right? And the Sox for our South Side friends as well. But a tourist just comes and enjoys the benefits of the city without any interest in the issues of our city. They don't care about the homeless gentlemen that are sleeping under the Kennedy. They don't care about our pension problems. They don't care about our broken school systems. They don't care. They come in, they enjoy, and they leave. 
But for those of us who live here, we want to live like citizens and not like tourists. Now, we want to enjoy our city, and we do enjoy the city. We benefit greatly from the many things of the city. But the issues of the city are our issues. That gentleman who sleeps under the Kennedy is named Dwayne, and he stands at Division Street exit. We care about that guy. We care about the financial situation of our city and our state, and we care about the education of our children. I asked a number of our volunteers who serve here by the hand why they serve. What's their motive for serving? Overwhelmingly, if not everyone, overwhelmingly they said, I want to be committed to the work in my community. They care about their city. They think of themselves as citizens. And it struck me as I was reading these things that I get to be their pastor. The privilege of being able to walk along with these folks who recognize the importance of saying, we're in. Dr. Lutzer, you and I were at a meeting a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember this, but we were talking about the needs of the city. And you had this great analogy, which I've used many times. You talked about the city being a lake and a dirty lake. And many times Christians look at the lake as their job is to catch as many fish as they can as quickly as they can to get them out of the lake. And then Dr. Lutz, you said, we're not just interested in the fish, we're interested in the lake. We're interested in making that lake clean for everyone. Because to live as a citizen and to care about the issues of the city is not distinctively a Christian thing. It ought to be very high on our radars as followers of Christ, but it's not distinctively a Christian thing. It is a human thing. It's what we would call common grace, that it falls under the common grace that we care about how all people are treated within our city. There are some things that all people in our city have a right to, and we have a responsibility to help make those things happen for them. And I would say education is clearly one of those things. Mike Rolfus, the director of Renew Chicago, the ministry of park that engages the city on our behalf, reminded me this past week of what Dr. John Perkins shared. He's a pastor, a civil rights activist, an author, a community developer, and someone that I have a great deal of respect for. And he reminded me that Dr. Perkins had shared with us that education is the civil rights issue of the 21st century. Study after study, Statistic after statistic reminds us that when we invest in the education of our city, when we invest in our children, the city gains, the city benefits. Teen pregnancy decreases with each grade in high school and college completed. Gang involvement drops. Homicides decrease. Education helps with the increase of employment. And Danita shared a number of those kind of stats that help us understand the importance of this. We want people educated because people that are educated will give taxes and they will be involved in their community. The dean of students at a city high school reminded me just this morning as we were talking that our current educational system is not meeting the needs of business now or does it look like it will be able to meet the needs in the future we're behind what is called STEM, maybe you've heard of this, science, technology, engineering, and math. A better educational system serves businesses and then serves our city. All right, second, why are we here and why should we care? And why does this theme, let education ring, really matter for us? Because it's good for the students. There was a father who was babysitting his son, or as my wife would often tell me, you're not babysitting, you have the privilege of spending the afternoon with your son. And after about two hours, his father was exhausted. And he was trying to go, what can I do? So he sat down in his favorite chair and he picked up the newspaper and saw on the back of the first section a map of the world. He got this brilliant idea, he says, I know what I'll do, I'll cut out the map of the world, I'll cut out a bunch of the countries, I'll put him at the kitchen table with tape, and I'll tell him, hey, there's a jigsaw puddle, when you put this together, come out and let me know. So he grabs his son, he walks him over, he puts him at the kitchen table with all the things that he needs, and his son comes in about five minutes later, holding in his hand the map of the world, and the father looks at him and goes, you're done? Oh, yeah, Dad, I'm done. And so immediately the father's thinking, my son is brilliant. He has my genes. 
And he said to his son, he goes, how did you do this? He goes, well, Dad, I dropped a couple of pieces on the ground, and when I saw on the other side that they were pictures of a man, I turned all the pieces over, and I taped the man together. <laughs> and then when I turned it over, the world was in perfect shape. See, we believe that when people are put together properly, the world will take shape. We will see a healthy place for us to live. Education is not the only thing. And as a pastor, I would tell you that it's not the most important thing. But it is a key piece to helping children be healthy and to be whole. How many of our children begin to check out of school because they can't keep up? They can't read at level. They can't do math. They can't research a science project. Self-esteem is so low. What's interesting in education, and maybe you know this, is that the whole view of, of self-esteem in education, though, is changing. The solution used to be, we'll reward kids for everything. You just sign up for Little League, you get a trophy. You show up to class, you get a star. You bring your book, you get a star. And they're finding that has not worked. It has not worked. What they have found instead is that we need to challenge students. We need to expect more from students. We need to give them a clear vision for who they can be and what can take place. And educators are finding out that this is what now is working in the lives of children. By the hand does a great job of motivating students to realize all that God has made them to be. To push through mistakes and failures, to fail forward, to get up and try again. And then to say to these kids, I'm there, man. I'm with you. I'm going to walk along this side. You saw every student tonight had a mentor standing next to him. Every parent and every educator in this room knows that every child needs to be motivated just a little bit different. I call it the power of belief. What does it mean for us to come alongside someone, a child, and say to them, look how God has made you. Look how distinct you are. The fingerprints of God are on your life. What does it look like for you to get going and to not give up? And By the Hand Club offers this through their staff and through their volunteers. When I was doing my tour with the two sophomores that walked me around, they talked about person after person after person and the investment that these adults had made in their lives and the lives of their friends. The thing I love about the volunteers and staff at By the Hand is that the self-esteem they seek to build in the lives of these kids is not built first on performance, but on the truth that there is a God who has created these children, a God who knows them completely and a God who loves them entirely. When God is at the center of a child's self-esteem, they learn not to perform to gain the attention of their God or to perform to gain the attention of an adult. They learn instead that they are so securely loved by a God who says to them, I know everything about you, and it doesn't change my opinion about you at all. It's the security of this love relationship with God that they now are able to settle in and look at their life very differently because Christ is at the center. It is to Jesus and to Jesus alone they seek to honor. There's a prodigy who played his first concert, and people waited with great anticipation for him to finally come out publicly and for them to hear his pieces. He walked out to the middle of one of these halls, great beautiful halls, and he sat down at the piano and he began to play. For 75 minutes he played piece after piece, flawless, and everyone could tell that this young man was going places, that he was going to be someone special. And at the end of the performance he stood up and he walked to the front of the stage and he bowed. And applause erupted all over the hall. People began to stand and began to cheer, and yet his face was focused. His face was focused on the first balcony in the middle seat on the first row. His eyes didn't move from that one location. As people applauded, he didn't smile, he didn't respond, and then little by little, the crowd began to look behind them and to see who he's staring at. And there was an older gentleman with a long gray beard sitting there with his arms crossed. And the people cheered and the people applauded, but this young prodigy just stopped and looked and he waited. And then finally, this older gentleman begins to go. And the prodigy smiles and he bows because it was that one seat, that person in that one seat 
That's the applause he wanted. That's who mattered. It was his opinion that he sought. Who sits in that seat for you? Who sits in that seat? What's in that seat for you? Performance? Money? Things? See, one of the things By the Hand Club does so well is they remind these kids that Jesus sits in that seat for them. It's Jesus that is important. It's Jesus that is the audience for them to learn how to serve and to seek Jesus. Because we know as followers of Christ that if we make sure that he is our audience of one, that all the other cries of the world will begin to fall away. Why are we here? Why do we care about By the Hand Club? Why do we care about this theme education ring? Because it's good for the volunteers. It's good for the volunteers. These kids learn that followers of Jesus care for them. Not for what they do, but for what God has made them to do. They are fed, they get exercised, they are tutored, and they are invested in spiritually by leaders who are motivated. Not because they feel good about themselves, though that might be true but are motivated by the same love that these children are hearing about. The staff and volunteers serve because they know that they have first been loved by God and God has served them. They have experienced the greatest act of service by experiencing the events of Easter, of Good Friday and Easter. The actions of the God of the universe making right what humanity has messed up in our rebellion against him. They don't serve these children because they feel sorry for them. They don't serve these children because they feel guilty of the privileges that they experienced when they were growing up. No. The works of God's grace in their lives, that's what stirs them to love these kids. When we know we are loved so deeply by God, we are now able to love others in a deeply profound way. This love that the leaders have for these kids does not keep score of the wrongs done to them. A love that does not choose to remember the slights being ignored, talked about, or being resisted. A love that says, my love for you does not come as a result of your love for me. My love for you comes as a result that I am already fully and completely loved and now I am freed up to give my life away to you. A love that looks to catch these kids doing right things that care about the whole child, mind, body, and soul. These staff and volunteers are tools in the hand of a great God as this God shapes the lives of these kids. A story from one of our volunteers that really touched me. She said, I was helping a student with his math homework. He was doing really well focusing and successfully completing some difficult problems. I stopped stopped him and said, You're really smart. This math is coming easy to you. He looked at me as if I was crazy, as so many kids do, and said, what are you talking about? No one has ever told me I was smart before. About five seconds later, after a time of moment of hesitation, I repeated, you're smart. He continued on with his homework, unfazed by my speechlessness or my tears literally streaming down my face. The thought that sometimes kids don't hear truth. They don't know what is good about them. Sometimes they don't hear anything or sometimes they only hear negative things. By the Hand is an incredible place that tells kids these things. And every single Thursday night, I get the opportunity to tell these incredible children that they are smart They're good drawers, they're great dancers, they're good at math, that they're a good friend, that they're funny. But the most important thing I get to share with them is that there is a God who loves them unconditionally. And then she finishes, how lucky I am to be able to share that. I was speaking with this dean of students again this morning. He shared with me that one of the honors of working with kids is that You have the privilege of helping them see how education can help break the cycle in their lives. Education can be a way out of poverty and violence. It exposes kids to a bigger world than the one they're growing up in. It gives them other models for what life can look like. But the staff and volunteers of By the Hand understand that as important as helping kids pass classes, graduating from high school or going to college, there's even a more important issue at hand, and it's the issue of their character. A child may go to college and graduate with a degree and still choose to live deceptively, 
to power up on others, to take the credit for what others have done. Obtaining a degree does not change the condition of someone's heart. It does not make them better people. As a follower of Jesus, I fully believe it is only the work of God in the heart of spiritually broken people that will bring about that kind of change. Another volunteer from Park put it this way, what I love about this program is that it's not just about getting the grades or getting kids off the streets, but the focus is put on God, the Bible, and what Jesus says to do. I feel that this is the key. If they can grasp that, it will change them forever. I love the heart of the folks at By the Hand Club. And I appreciate immensely their care for these kids. All right, last one. Why are we here? Why do we care? And why is it important to understand that we need to let education ring? Because it is good for those of us who invest. There are two types of people in many situations. There are those who have a need and those who can meet a need. Those who serve it by the hand seek to spend their lives to meet the needs of others because as followers of Jesus, they are motivated to be generous. They have great confidence in their God who loves them and will also provide for them. As they pour out their life, they know their God will pour into theirs. Many of us in this room stand in a place right now where we can meet needs. You're here tonight to help meet a need, a need that can help address a very significant issue in our city, in the lives of these kids, a need that will help bring hope to not just these kids, but also to the staff and the volunteers that by the hand. For those of us who are followers of Jesus, we give because we have first been given to. We have received undeserved generosity. We experience from a God who knows us better than we know ourselves and yet gives himself to us because he chooses to love us. And then we choose to give with open hands to remind ourselves that money does not own us. And we choose to give quietly to combat the urge to be noticed and to fall into self-righteousness. Look at me. Tonight you have a chance. You have a chance to have an impact in the lives of kids, in the lives of adults, but in the lives of the people that live in this city. You have a chance. And I'm telling you as a pastor that what you're about to do right now is more, than, more significant than you possibly could ever begin to imagine. You have a chance. And I hope that you take that opportunity to invest, not in just today, but in the stories that we heard of years to come. Thank you.